welcome to Living and Enjoying Life the I Am Way. I am Coach Butler, I am Pastor Butler, and Coach Val is away enjoying life with her beloved husband. And so I'm here to in, uh, enlighten you and just continue the flow that we had earlier about regarding leveling it up. It's important right now, I coach over the gold, and it's important right now that we step into the new level. It's important that you take the opportunity and take the time to let go of some things in your life and let go of some people. When we make a turn in our life, it, it, it is not wrong. It is not bad. You're not sinful. If you let some people off of your bus, because a loaded bus has no momentum, your bus should be you, Jesus, and those that God has designated to take this next turn with you. And spend time with God. As we mentioned in our last broadcast, one of the strategies is to spend time before the Lord. God, who is to go with me? Your inner circle is very key in 2019. Those that will understand, even when they may not understand your direction, will understand the God in you so that you can take your next step it is important that they be your inner circle and go with you. People that love you, people that are willing to walk alongside of you as God moves you into a new space and a new time. This is also a time for all of us to receive a course correction from the Father. Some of us have been on one course for so long and some of us are resistant to change and God wants a course correction. It does not mean that you've done anything wrong. It does not mean that you're a failure. A course direction means just as a new path, a new direction, because everything around the world globally has changed. Technology, if you bought a computer three months ago, it's almost out of date. If you bought uh, new products, there are newer products on the market right now, especially the beginning of January. Don't spend your money frivolously, but take the opportunity to plan. One of the reasons why I'm a coach is because no one taught me how to plan and to plan for my future, not for my bills, not for what was in my now, but to plan for my future. It does not matter what generation you're in. I'm not harping on millenniums or, um, or the baby boomers or the Gen Xs. It's important that note, regardless of the generation that you're in, take a moment to plan for your future. As I listen to many people, there have been on jobs that they thought that they were gonna be there till retirement. Well, guess what? That's not the society that we live in. So spend time with God to get the mind of Christ and for him to download to you. He's not a respective person. We're a New Testament church. He go, he'll speak to you just like he'll speak to a prophet. He'll speak to you just like he speaks to your pastor. He is no, He died. Jesus died for you so that you could come into the throne room boldly, relax, and spend time with him so that your father can tell you your next steps and what's going on around you globally so that you can make some sound decisions, not based on your past, not based on yesterday, but based on your tomorrow. It is important that you let some people go. It's important right now that some of you, I call them midnight riders. You get prayer calls in the middle of the night because they bucket dumping. How many times have you prayed for people? You've given them the wisdom from God and the wisdom from the word, and they're still calling you with the same problem. New strategy. You don't pray, they pray. If they call you, I guarantee you, they'll stop calling you. Because the fact is, our job is to grow up people and to mature them. That's what Jesus did with the disciples. Discipling God's body is to help them to grow and to lean on Christ, not to lean on you and not to lean on me. And some people, the biggest thing that you can do is stop being a crutch for them because they're supposed to learn how to pray. And if they've called you more than three times with the same situation, you allow them to lead your prayer. 
And I guarantee you, you will not be on the phone an hour and a half and two hours like you used to be. But you'll be on a phone about 15, 20 minutes because now they have to take what they've learned from you on how to pray and now begin to execute, now begin to put praying into application in our lives. The most important thing as Christian leaders and as believers is to disciple, to teach people, to teach them. It is not about your awesomeness. It's not about your ability to pray because without Holy Spirit, what we have is nothing. But it's about you being able to show somebody. It's also about uh, stop allowing people. I want you, your time is money. When our last bro broadcast, Coach Val was sharing with you about putting some skin in the, the game. A lot of people don't want to spend any time. They don't want, they want to spend your time. They're spending your time. But they're not spending their time. And so as a result, I want you to change your paradigm. If it's nothing more than to redeem your sleep time, you're busy praying, not with you and God, but you're busy praying for all these people on the prayer line. Uh, eye opener doesn't make you more powerful because if they're not changing, I'm not talking about people that are in crisis that really need you. I'm not talking about people who really need you to war for them. But I'm talking about those that have been spending your time when you could be focusing on Christ or you got an hour now to do some of the things that are on your desk that you have never gotten to because other people have been spending your time. One of the things that I taught in Over the Goal and one of the, the principles of Over the Goal is I cause everyone to evaluate who is spending your time. You'll be surprised of how much time you're wasting. It is important for 2019 for you to evaluate, are you really fruitful? Or are you feeding your own need for affirmation? So we're going to take a few minutes and we'll be back, back with you right after this break. Hello, I'm Coach Val, the I Am Lady, and I have some exciting news for you. We are um, endeavoring on launching a new program for youth. It's uh, teenagers and college students. I have a group of powerful kids that it's called Different I Am. And we're going to be doing some fundraisers. And we would appreciate if you would like to make a donation that you visit the IamLady.com. All of the proceeds will go to the teen group they will be taking a missions trip to puerto rico and we also will be taking them to dc to explore how we're governed as well as looking at our roots at the african-american museum so we would appreciate your support and a donation of a dollar five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars whatever you can afford to help these young people expand their life and to get to know who they are in christ i thank you and have a great day Welcome back. We ended about who is spending your time. I want you to evaluate your time. One of the things in corporate we used to do, uh, I used to be a commercial casualty underwriter and very much it was an analytical job. And it was important for you to evaluate your time. And we used to, um, if I spent too much time on one thing, but I had to make I used to have a little, what I call a cheat sheet, a crib sheet of where I was spending my time and how much it took me to do and to process this or an endorsement or talk to this broker so that I would know, not my manager, I would know where my spent because you feel like your time has gotten away from you. The same thing with ministry. Sometimes our time has gotten away from us and you need to know who's exasperating your time. Where are you spending your time? Are you doing it profitable for Christ or you need it for the simple reason you need the affirmation? It's important for us to really pinpoint where we're losing time because wherever we're losing time, other than sleep time, we're losing resources. We could out reallocate that to something that is more profitable for the goal that God wants us to accomplish. Two things and reevaluating who is occupying your time, it is important for you to understand and grasp what God wants you to do. If you're doing a God thing, 
than my time on something else that's a good thing. Doesn't mean that it's bad. Doesn't mean that you're not being Christian and godly. But if I'm all focused for what God has called me to do, then guess what? We're both not focusing. And as a result, there's a little discontent. God has called us to accomplish certain things for him, for his kingdom, for the purpose of community. If I'm supposed to be outreaching, then that's the time that I need to be spent outreaching and not be spent on the prayer time for the phone. My prayer time is between this amount of time and that amount of time. Usually I do prayer calls early in the morning. Why? To command the morning. It is more fruitful to get up in the morning with those that need your prayer time and to need your agreement prayer. And I only agree with things that are biblical and in the word of God. And I'm honest because some of us are not honest in our prayer time. I don't agree. It's not in the word. And we have to be more honest as prayer warriors. I'm not in agreement with you, what you're asking me to pray. I can pray with you in this manner. Again, living a fruitful, the best life is understanding what we're doing that is not profitable. And it's important uh, to evaluate ourselves. One of the things is the Bible tells us to meditate in the word and to spend time with God. One of the greatest things in the morning. And guess what? Sometimes meditating in the God means closing your mouth, not asking for anything, but God this, but God that. No, Father, I come before you this morning just to hear your voice and to hear what you've got to say about my life what happened yesterday, how to handle this, how to handle this situation with wisdom. And if we don't be still and listen from his voice, we miss the strategy. We miss the wisdom. We miss the course correction. 2019 is going to be the greatest year for course correction. There are a lot of us that were doing one thing. We were going in one direction and God has changed. He's given us a new Jordan or a, a, a river to, to cross. Uh, one of the things, what I love in the, in the scriptures, the Bible tells us that um, Jesus, the, the scripture tells us that Jesus had need to go to the woman at work, at the well. All right, so he took a course correction because the guys, the 12 disciples were upset with him. When you read the text, they were upset with him. They were like, why are you going this away? Jesus had disgruntled 12 disciples as well as the pastors do right now. Some of your leadership will not understand where you're going, but it's important. Some of your friends will not understand. This is where you're going and why you're going this way. But guess what? Your course correction can bring you to the woman or the man of God or your Billy Graham that will blow up the kingdom. The course correction of coming to work on a specific day that um, you may not have planned on going in, course corrections that can change the destiny of someone else's life. Because one Billy Graham in your life, believers, the crowns, the stones that are in your crowns for the lives that were saved, it's not always based on you, but it's based on the life that you change that changes other lives. How many lives are you impacting? Sit down and count. One of the, um, the greatest thing is that multi-level came out of the Bible because it's duplication and replication. What lives are you impacting? And you know what? In your quiet time, take a moment. Write a list. You know what? I came across this person. God gave a good word. That goes on your prayer list. You know, God, you changed the course of their life. You know what, Father? They're no longer angry with you. They're no longer angry. God, and so now that people are not angry, they're now loving. They're now in church. They're now fellowshipping with other believers. Whose lives have you impacted? And one of the King things that I love about this song, count your blessings, count your blessings about the, the way God ordered your feet across the lives in the supermarket, um, getting your car washed, when you went shopping, or when you just came out the door 
And I do this for everyone that's in a congregation. When was the last time that you came outside of your congregation and went across the street and shook the hand to somebody that was sitting on the step? When was the last time that you went to a dinner and loved on the waitress, not giving her or him demands, but showing the love of Christ? You just came out of morning service and yet you totally did not take the nuggets of gold that you got from your leadership and pass them on to someone else. That's one of the reasons why you go to Sunday morning service, course correction. To 2019, is a, it is a season of course correction. That's our time for the night. Coach Val will be back with us, and we will see you uh, next week.